In this video, we will migrate an AWS RDS database from one AWS account to another account. Go to RDS console. For that, search for RDS. Click on RDS link. Click on databases. Okay, we don't have any database. This is because we are in a wrong region. We need to go to the correct region to find the database we have a database in north virginia click on the database we will be migrating this database to a different aws account for that we need to take a snapshot uh, from the action menu on the right corner click on take snapshot you need to give it a name okay i given a name and then click take snapshot so we have a snapshot creating it is the status is creating we need to wait until the snapshot is created the snapshot is now completed the status is available and the progress is completed now rds database snapshots are encrypted with a default key this key is not shareable so if we share this snapshot with another aws account they won't be able to restore it so first of all we need to create a new key for that search for key management service click on key management service then you need to click on customer managed keys then click on create key and this key will cost you dollar one per month you can delete it after the restore is completed select the first op option then click on next you need to give a name my shared rds kms key you can put any name here click on next then if you want any iam user you can give permission in this case i don't need to give anything any iam user permission to this key so click on next on this page you have other aws accounts click on add another aws account then go to the destination where we are going to copy the aws rds database to get the account id from the name drop down put the account id here and click on next click on finish now we go back to the rds console from services click on rds go to snapshots and click on our snapshot that we need to share from the actions you need to copy snapshot this will create a new copy of the original snapshot using the shared key we just created give it a new name shared rds snapshot and then you can have the tags copied if you want target option group we can select default mysql option here under encryption you need to select my shared rds kms key this is the new key you just created copy snapshot click on the copy snapshot button this will create a new snapshot the status is creating progress zero percentage once this snapshot copy is completed we can share it with other aws account since the key is shared with other account other account will be able to use this snapshot a copy of the snapshot is now completed click on shared rds snapshot from the action menu share snapshot we need to get account id from other aws account so switch to other aws account click on the account name copy the account id and paste here click on add button now you can click on the save button to share next to go back to 
destination aws account click on rds click on snapshots Share, click on the shared with me this is the database backup from the action menu you need to copy the snapshot and give it a name and give it some name and then you can use the default rds key for this click on copy snapshot again this will take a few minutes to finish status is creating and progress zero percentage on source server will let us see what database specification we have it is mysql community and the size is db2 to small and the region is us east 1c you will be using the same region when you restore the database click on the database we need to find the mysql version and disk used on the source rds database so that we can create new rds database with exactly same amount of disk space and mysql version click on the configuration link here you will find the mysql engine version take a note of it and the storage is 20 GB let's see if the uh, copy is finished click on this refresh it is still not finished the snapshot is now completed uh, we can restore the snapshot now click on the snapshot then from actions restore sna snapshot select mysql community here then we need to give it a name live then you can use the default vpc or create a new vpc in this case i will use default subnet group default uh, by default rds will not be available to public we need to access remotely so select public access yes then you need to use a security group you can use the existing or create a new security group under the db instance class you need to select the size or plan for this add rds database a default is very large server with the 4 vcpu and 60 gb ram it will cost you a lot you need to change this uh, on old server we have db t2 small so we need to find exactly same server server type for that this is a brustable uh, classes that includes t classes click on that and then from the drop down you need to find t3 small we only have t3 now on this server that is fine t2 and t3 are almost same price and this is t3 small on old server we had t2 small that is fine t3 is new instance type that will give you more cpu under storage we have general purpose ssd allocated storage 20 gb that is exactly same as what we had on old server 20 gb availability zone do not create standby instance if you do this you will have a standby instance in this case we don't have a standby instance in source server so we will use this option availability option we need to select exactly what we had before it was us east 1c i will select exactly same database authentication we need password authentication encryption we will use the default key okay we can click restore db instance now the snapshot is restoring now it will take 5 to 10 minutes while we wait for the rds restore to be finished let's explore the newly created rds database 
uh, we have a security group VPC security group default uh, this is active that means the security group is created and ready to be used security groups are like firewall it is used to restrict access to AWS resources in this case RDS database for testing I need to allow access to this RDS database from my local computer for that click on the security group click on inbound rules click on edit inbound rule we need to click on add rule this is custom TCP we need to find MySQL from here MySQL under this custom from my IP address that will allow me to connect to this RDS database from my IP address save rules so let us go back to RDS search for RDS click on RDS click on databases it is still not finished it status is modifying this is the database endpoint and port is 3306 let us see if we can connect to this port using telnet telnet 3306 we got the mysql prompt that means the mysql server is now live even though aws status still showing modifying let's try connecting to the mysql server for this type mysql minus h then the end point of this rds database copy and paste here you can specify port but this is the default port so no need to specify that then you need to specify username you then the username you can find the username from configuration this is the DB username then you need to enter P P means uh, it will ask for the password press enter it will ask for the password the password is same as what you had on old server the source server password so I have it copied and pasted here okay I'm able to log into my SQL database on the new server show databases will show all the databases okay looks good everything looks good so we have completed the migration of RDS database from one AWS account to another